Hey, what up everyone? I'm Cinecool, and this is EverQuest Project 1999, and today we are in Oasis. Oasis, uh, with our Dark Elf and Necromancer, killing some caimans, some crocodiles, some deep water caimans, some deep crocodiles, deep water crocodiles, whatever they are. Oh, uh, I think we're at level, what are we in this video? I think 16. Pretty sure it's 16. So I'm trying to fear kite now. So up until this point, I hadn't been fear kiting, but now um, I'm trying it. And I hope we capture in this video me killing some reds, yellows, whites, because now that I can fear kite, uh, I feel like I can kill reds more often. Now it doesn't get me killed every once in a while, and I noticed that my feigned death just wasn't cutting it. I just got it at level 16, so. I don't know. It probably gets better, but for me, Gate has been a lot better than Feign Death so far, as far as getting away from a hairy situation. But yeah, Dark Elf Necromancer, level 16, in the Oasis. Um, at level 16, I got a bunch of new spells. So, we got a new pet. He's pretty big. He keeps getting taller and taller. I think he costs me like two bone chips now. But the good part is he's level like 14 to 16, so I could possibly get a even pet, and they're really strong. Um, at one point I had a even pet with a scythe, a rusty scythe that was like doing tons of damage. It was at least 940 or something like that, 1050, something like that. And he was hitting things for over 20 damage, which is good per slash for, for my pet. Usually it's like 12 to 16 or something like that per hit. If he just uses his fist. Um, but with the scythe, with the rusty scythe, with anything with a lot of damage, he does like 20-something sometimes. And so he had a really nice weapon. It was a really good con pet, like even to me. And then what had happened was I was fighting a caiman or something, and a dry bone skeleton jumped me. So And it was red. <clears throat> Instead of panicking, I um killed the caiman, and I feared the Drybone Skeleton, which was red, luckily it hit, because the higher something is, level-wise, the harder it is for your spell to hit. It'll just resist it, or something. It might happen right here, I don't know. It's, it's I don't think I got it on recording, but... Get jumped by a Drybone Skeleton, a red one, by the way. Luckily, my pet was the same level as me, so it took a couple of the hits, then I took a couple of the hits, then I got the fear off. Finished the Cayman, and then I hit the Skeleton with an Engulfing Darkness, and set my pet on it. Um, it had its scythe, it was doing tons of damage, luckily. Luckily, the engulfing darkness took hold, and the fear took hold. And then, no, I didn't get very many, uh, resistances. <clears throat> I didn't get, I'm sorry, I just did a two-hour live stream, so my voice is going crazy. Um, but luckily everything took hold, and I beat it. I was like, whoa, I just, I just fear kited a red while I was, I got jumped by it. It wasn't even, I wasn't even prepared. So I'm like, if I can be prepared for a red, I bet you I could take a red. So then I tried it on a deep water croc, and I also killed that. And, you know, it resisted a couple times. It was a little bit more difficult, but I was totally prepared for it, so I won that as well. I was like, wow, I can kill reds over here in Oasis on the beach. Um, so then I, you know, was trying yellows, whites. Eventually I did die to a red. Um, it just resisted too much. It killed my pet. I think my good pet had died at some point. We got jumped by a couple things, and I had to run to the zone or something. <clears throat> so, I had a different pet. It was a little bit lower level. It was blue to me. Uh, so, eventually, it all fell apart, and I died. Uh, the the deep water, red deep water croc. Maybe it was a, a, a another level higher than the dry bone skeleton or the other crocodiles I was killing. But, look at this one right here. It's yellow. Let's see what happens. Uh, something. I think I chickened out or something because, uh, no, I did Dark Pact. These things don't attack you on sight, which is nice. So Oasis on the beach. Um, so if you sit here, as long as you pay attention and you watch out for Mad Men, um, Dry Bone Skeletons, um, Crypt Mummies, stuff like that, as long as you're keeping an eye out for those. And if you stay, like, right against the water, they usually won't come right against the water. But most people will meditate on the pillars. There's P1, which we're looking at right now in the distance. 
then if you turn, look at the water, and then keep turning, there will be P2. And that's where I've been mostly, is P2. Because P1 is, like, always camped by a group. And then P1's by the pier. P2 is more towards the, the other zone. Not the, not northern row, but the other side. Um, so the beach is really good because the caiman, the, the crocodiles, the deep water crocs, they, um, aren't social and they don't aggro. So you can be killing a red deep water crocodile and nothing else will jump on you except for, like I said, the dry bone skeletons, the mad men, and, and those things. So all you gotta do is watch out for them. But let's skip this meditating, that since we can. I'll go a little forward a little bit, and here we are done meditating casting some uh, buffs on ourself um just gave my pet uh impart strength so take strength from me gives it to my pet but what else did i get at level 16 so a new pet um i got a new shield shielding which is really good then i got another one um i forget what it's called uh spirit armor that i can give to my pet so now i can give my pet armor uh and strength and endure d disease and endure cold. Like, I could give my pet four buffs right now if I wanted to. But here is a white deep water caiman. So this will be a good uh, representation of what you do. So engulfing darkness, send my pet on it, cast fear. It resisted the fear spell. The higher the level the thing is compared to you, the more it will resist. So trying fear again. I really want to get that fear off. Uh, it resisted it again. So bad example here, but that's you got to deal with it. Hopefully you got a good pet that can take some damage, even from a white. Eventually you'll get it. That's three in a row that, that we missed. So now I'm checking on my pet's health like, crap. How are we doing here? Let's get this fear off. We really need to get this fear off bad. Is my pet really going to die? There we go, finally. So now my pet's not taking damage. We can really dot this thing up properly. I'm, using, I'm still using Leech because um, it gives me health and it dots them. So... It helps with, uh, like, Dark Pact. If I want to sit down, Dark Pact takes my health and gives me mana. So I feel like the leech that's doing damage and giving me health works really well with the Dark Pact. And then um, you can also type your pet's health. But he has really good health. He must be a good pet. 76% still. Fighting a white. Um, trying to get another Fear or Engulfing Darkness off. That's the main two spells you use when you're Fear Kiting is a Snare and a Fear. Anything and your pet. Anything other than that is just bonus. You could literally just engulfing darkness, send your pet on it, fear it, and just keep those up. Keep your pet coming after it. Keep the engulfing darkness on it. Keep the fear on it, and you're good. Uh, but if you, the more dots you add, the quicker the battle goes, and the less chance that it's going to resist or kill your pet or anything like that, or or fear it, run into like more trouble. That's another thing that's good about the beach. The gators don't like run you into too much trouble usually. But let's skip this meditating once again. Keep it nice and uh, action-filled. Because it's a lot of meditating, but it's a lot of killing whites, reds, and yellows. So I might sit on the pier for five minutes, but I'm going to go down and kill a red and get like half a, a quarter of a bubble of experience, you know. And then I'll go up, sit on the pillar for five minutes, and I'll come down and get a quarter of a bubble of experience from a red, you know. And by the... It's a lot. It's really good experience, even though it seems like you're meditating quite a bit. Um, the the experience you get from the kills is worth it, especially if you're killing reds and yellows and stuff. So I'm just skipping, trying to get done with the get the meditating over with, but not go too far. So still meditating here. There we go. I found a yellow deep water crocodile that we could maybe kill. I almost have full mana. I got all my buffs on, except for uh, Grim Aura, but. That was that's pretty low level, so I accidentally caught, cast engulfing darkness on myself there. That's a noob noob mistake. All right, so wasted mana there, but what do we got here? Crocodile, a deep water crocodile. All right, let's go with this yellow deep water crocodile since we're all ready to go. Engulfing darkness is the first thing you want to cast. Then while it's running to you, you want to send your pet and do fear uh, as quick as possible. The crocodile usually comes at you until your pet can get its attention. A lot of the time you'll uh, have to fear it. But there we go. My pet got its attention. So now I'm trying to fear. So it's snared. It resisted my fear and it hates that. Even when it resists, it uh, still wants to come after you. It still gets really mad at you. Even when they resist. So there we go. Got the fear off. It is snared and feared with a pet beating on it. A good pet. 
now it's also dotted up with a uh, uh, I forget what that spell is called. Heart flutter? No. What's it called? Might be heart flutter. Um, but it takes away its AC, its strength, and it dots it. So I love these dots that do multiple things. They might not be the most powerful as far as damage over time, but uh, they do multiple things, which is nice. Like leech will give me health and do dam and do damage over time. Um, what is it called? I think it's is it heart flutter? I don't know. The one I can't remember what it's called. The one with the third one down there. I could probably, f we'll see it here in a second. But it takes away their AC, which is good for your pet. Your pet can do more damage if they have less AC. It uh, takes away their strength, so they're not hitting your pet as hard. And then it's also a dot. So, Heart Flutter. Yep, I was right. So, Heart Flutter. I have other uh, good dots that I could be putting on these things as well. But I kind of ran out of spots on my bar over there. I want the f everything I got there. I could take off the Spirit Armor, but... I feel like it's, uh, I don't want to forget to cast it, so I like to have it there. Then the Feign Death, I realized I, I put a gate there instead of the Feign Death. Then I like to have the last slot for my buffs, like Dark Pact, uh, Shielding, Grim Aura, um, stuff like that. Uh, I'll even use a Siphon Strength still sometime, even though I have better, um, debuffs for strength against the enemy. It's just a low level, I gain strength, they lose strength. It doesn't uh, have a lot of aggro to it. It doesn't cost a lot of mana. Sometimes you use your lower level spells. You don't always use the highest level of spells. But another another thing that was going on was I my level 16 spells cost quite a bit. Uh, they were like 8 plat. One was like 12 plat. There are a lot of plat. I only have like 20 plat left. I didn't even buy all my spells. There was two, two that are for... You have to research to get them. So I wasn't able to get those. Those are going to end up costing me like 20 to 30 plat to buy in like the East Commons. But one of them was a like Grasping Roots. You could uh, root undead, which I know is a very specific situation, but it's a root, a dot, but you can only cast it on undead. And then the other one was a shield, another shield, but it costs like a cat's eye, a gate, and uh, also you have to research it, I think. So there's two spells I don't have that I... That are re there for you have to find somebody that can research them, and then you have to go and buy it. So, so we're just meditating. Like I said, it does, does it is a lot of meditating. But if you get a good pet, you get you get yourself buffed up. You get your pet buffed up. Uh, you'll meditate every once in a while. But the the safest spot is on one of the pillars to actually climb one of the pillars and uh, sit up there and like on the side of it. And meditate that'd be the safest spot because nothing comes there the only thing i've ever heard of coming on the pillar is like one time a sand giant was like on top of the pillar and so, and and they were saying in ooc that they had never seen that before so i guess it does happen very 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 occasionally only if a jerk like pulls it there so what is this a yellow deep water caiman let's see if we can beat this yellow so we've already beat two yellows and a white I don't think I recorded any red, me beating any reds, but I definitely did. And I'm, I'm going to get it on recording, so if you don't believe me, I'm going to be trying like all day today to be recording and killing a red at the same time. It's kind of a hard situation to capture because it only happens every once in a while. And I'd have to be recording quite a bit. So the fear spell wore off. Um, doing some good damage, though. He's almost halfway down. There, got another fear off, but look at that damage it was doing to me. Really hit you hard, so you gotta be careful. Make sure you keep them feared and snared. That's your main two goals. As long as your pet's alive, you got it snared and you got it feared. Especially feared and your pet alive. If the snare comes off, that's like the third priority, you know? It's a really high priority, and it's a top three priority for sure, but... Um... Because you don't want it running all over the place. And you don't want it coming back to you super fast either. You want to know it's coming back dead pretty much just sitting there getting pounded on so i might as well meditate while that happens and you gain experience so going pretty well i think right now in real time i'm like only a half a bubble further than you just saw there so i need like a bubble and a half to get 17 but i got through i got those first three bubbles in 16 really fast by killing uh yellows whites and reds on the beach here there's also the orc highway if you went to the other side of the lake um, 
there's also the Orc Highway, which is not a bad place to grab some stuff, but it's a little bit more, um, you get a little bit more things jumping you. Over here, it's still a problem. Like, you'll have a madman, a green madman jump you. You'll have a red dry bone skeleton jump you. You'll have a, a blue or white crypt mummy jump you every once in a while. But just before you fear kite, just look around. Make sure there's nothing coming. And then start your fear kiting. And if you see anything, like a crypt mummy nearby, go kill that first. And then meditate back up. And then do your uh, fear kiting against the red. Just make sure you have all the space you need. With nothing that will aggro anywhere in the in the in a hundred within a hundred yards, you know what I mean. Either way, like you want a football field to work with, with nothing that's going to jump in. Um, let's go ahead and skip through some more meditating. Here we go. I think I'm running to the pillar though to meditate, but that's good. You'll get to see a spot. This is called P2. I'm pretty sure. Sometimes people even start groups over here on P2. If there's a group at the docks or P1 and it's full. And they're killing and they're doing well then sometimes a group at p2 will start but p1 is definitely better there's way more stuff to kill there and like um lockjaw i think spawns spawns over there sometimes it's like a named gator um but over here on on p p2 not a bad spot either you see that crypt mummy that thing will definitely jump in if you're doing uh if you're fear kiting so watch out for that so meditating up on the pillar nothing will attack you here sometimes a gator will walk by but no big deal. They're not going to jump you ever. They don't even give faction. It never happens, literally. So I'm going to go ahead and skip through this meditating. Definitely something you're going to be doing, though. The Crypt Mummy's gone. You'll sometimes see bards running around, kiting the whole zone. You'll sometimes see people killing the sand giants. Another thing you need to watch out for is sand giants. There's even a named sand giant. I don't know. Hopefully we kill at least one more thing in this uh, recording here. Sometimes I just record and it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. I don't know if we jump up and do anything else. All right. So this is probably the last thing we kill. Another deep water caiman. All right. White deep water caiman. So what have we done in this video? Two whites and two yellows. Pretty good. Um, I bet you a warrior can't kill a yellow uh, deep water uh, crocodile or caiman. Unless they're super duper twinked out. I'm nowhere near twinked. I have only, I barely have any equipment. And that's what's good about the Necromancer. It's a really good class if you, as your first class. It's a little bit complicated, but it's good as far as like um, money wise. You just, you don't need equipment. You don't need a twink. If you want to, if you want to play like a warrior, you're going to have to make that like your second or third. That's the mistake I made when I first played EverQuest back in the day. My first character was, I think, an enchanter, actually, but then I made a warrior and took it all the way to 60, and that's kind of a mistake. You really want to make, like, a necro or a mage or something that doesn't require equipment to be good. Um, I think those are the two main ones, the pet classes. There's probably a couple others, but a priest, I mean, a priest needs mana, but it can, everybody wants the priest no matter what, you know? A druid, but yeah, I think druid, um... Mage and Necro are like really good first characters, especially I feel like a Mage or a Necro, just because you can learn the game and um, you know, learn the game before you start grouping everywhere you go. So at least you know something about the game when you start grouping. Also, the fact that uh, you don't need equipment uh for Necros and Mages, but. Yeah, I think that's everything. Killed a couple whites, killed a couple yellows. I wish I could have got the reds on video. I definitely killed at least three or four reds while I was over here. And then I lost uh, one. I think only I've only died once over here, but it did took half my bubble. So I'm like a bubble and a half from 17 in real time. But yeah, like, share, subscribe. Uh, consider joining. It helps a lot. I just really appreciate anybody watching these. Hopefully you got something out of this, at least some entertainment or something, watching a, a newbie necro a fight in Oasis. So yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Peace.